friends, Mrs. Harris here. Today our I can statement is, I can place primary and secondary colors in order within my main subject drawn in the tree. We know the primary colors are red, yellow, and blue, and the secondary colors are green, orange, and purple, or in the art world, violet. We're going to look at our friend Roy G. Bibb. That's the order of the rainbow. Each letter represents a color. R is for red, and so on. Color plays a vitally important role in the world in which we live. Color can sway our thinking, change our actions, cause a reaction. It can be irritating or soothing to the eye, raise your blood pressure, or even suppress your appetite. As a powerful form of communication, color is irreplaceable. Red means stop, green means go. Traffic lights send this universal message daily. Our artist friend, Pablo Picasso, used color to create a feeling or a mood. He had what was called the blue period from 1901 to 1904. He was very depressed. Sometimes you've heard that saying, are you feeling blue? Which means are you sad? So the color blue is associated with sadness. In 1904, Picasso started to use bright, vibrant colors in his paintings. They call this the rose period. It lasted from 1904 to 1906. And you can see the colors create a sense of happiness, a sense of energy. Now it's your turn. You get to think about what animal you want to recreate with the rainbow colors. It could be a bird, like a toucan. It could be a chameleon, a lizard-like. It could even be a sloth something that you find in a tree. Hey, I've got another idea. What about an owl? The choice is yours. We're also going to get a little bit more creative with the leaves. We're going to add pattern into some of our leaves, making them look a little bit more artistic, a little different. It's going to be a lot of fun. All right, for this lesson, it is called Roy G. Biv in the Tree. Let's learn how to create a tree branch. Now, a lot of you typically just want to draw a single line. That is not a branch, that is a single line. If I close that line, sure, it's a branch, but we're in fourth grade now. We can do better than that. What I want to see you guys do is take your piece of paper, and I really want to see a branch that has a lot of branches, not a ton of them, but a lot of them coming off. When you think about your project, you're going to have to think, do I want to do my, use it horizontally, my paper, or do I want to use it vertically? That's the first thing you need to decide. Next thing you need to decide is, where am I going to put my animal? Is it going to be a chameleon, a bird, an owl? Where am I going to place it on here? If I fill it up too much with branches, it's going to be a little bit difficult. So when I'm creating a branch, the first thing I want to think about, I'm going to turn my paper like this so you can see it, is I want to think about it coming in from the side. Or maybe if I'm doing my paper vertically, it'll come in this way. But I want to think about these two as roads. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a V right in the middle of the road. You won't be starting with permanent marker. I'm using this so that you can see it for the sake of this video. Then I'm going to extend my road. I'm going to put a another extension on this road. I'm not going to make them equal because nothing grows symmetrically in a tree. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make another one and I'm going to make my road again. I keep adding V's. And that's where my road is, excuse me, my tree branch is going to come from. Notice the thickness. As I am making my branches, they're getting thinner. This isn't going to work because I've got all this negative space over here. I needed to make my branch come out further. And again, think about where my Roy G. Bibb creature is going to sit. So let me get another piece of paper and we'll get started. All right, I am going to draw a chameleon, and whenever we draw anything, I want you guys to think about simple shapes. So what I would do for my chameleon is I'm going to draw kind of a squished oval, and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to kind of do another oval, but I'm going to kind of make it thinking about a triangular nose shape. Next thing I'm going to do is think about the tail, and I know it's got to come around. And again, that's just a rough layout. I don't know if you can see it, so I'm gonna go over it in black marker. This is not what you're gonna do. I want you just to see that I've used the simple shapes to kind of outline my chameleon. Now I'm gonna go ahead with these simple shapes and I'm going to turn it into a chameleon on my final paper. Be right back. Here is my chameleon and here he is on my tree. One thing I want you to do is I want you to add at least eight 
leaves. So a leaf, I'm going to just add anywhere on my tree and I'm gonna make them rather big because I don't want little baby leaves because we're gonna be adding pattern inside of these leaves and we're gonna create a beautiful difference within the tree. One way that I do it is I kind of make a wiggly line and then I make a smiley face line. And then you could call that a frowny face line to create my leaves. Again, don't make them too little. This is about as small as you should get them because if they're too little, we're not gonna be able to see the pattern. I believe I've got five leaves and I'm gonna do another curly and another one. I could have one going off the page. That always works, remember that. And I'm gonna do one right here. And I think that's, I think I'll put one more. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think I'll do one more down here. So there are my leaves. Now, this is going to be broken up into the Roy G. Bibb, so R-O-Y-G-B-I-B-7. You can skip the I in Roy G. Bibb if you want to. So the head, I would make the R. Here comes the O. R-O-Y-G-B. Ivy, I would continue. I would just keep repeating the rainbow colors as I go down. I'm curving my lines. I'm not putting them on there straight because I want him to look like he's got some meat on him, like he's a little heavy, like he's got a little oof to him. Next thing I'm going to do after I've broken him up into his sections, I am going to go ahead and I'm going to begin to put patterns on my leaves. I can use both markers, the thick and the thin. It's your choice. I'm going to start with some lines on my leaves. Remember, we're doing different patterns on these leaves. Again, this is just going to be fun. You should use at least th three to four different values of green and how we're going to create those values. Remember the word value means light and dark. And when I create those values, I'm going to be adding perhaps black or brown into my color. I'm using colored pencils and crayons. If I'm using markers, this isn't going to be that easy. Hopefully you'll have a few different colored um, markers that will work. So I'm going to go ahead and work on the patterns and then I'll be right back. Alright, so now I've got all my pattern on my leaves and I'm ready to begin to add color. I'm going to start with my leaves. Um, when we're coloring this, remember your, whatever you choose, the chameleon, the owl, the parrot is going to be the Roy G. Bibb. So we'll go to that in a little bit, but I just thought this would be a little bit more fun to start with the leaves because I really want to see some differences in the colors. So, and again, your background is going to have color in it. Um, I've drawn some holes in this to represent some holes. You can choose to color these leaves in a solid color like this, but I'd also like to see some of them uh, where you've got some of these really fun patterns. I'd like to see where you've done some of the patterns, different colors, like I'm going around this circle with this uh, kind of this green. And again, I don't want it to look like that. I want it to look like it's finished because the white paper shouldn't throw, show through. Remember, we need to do our personal best when we're adding color. It's no differently than when you get up and brush your hair and get yourself ready. This is called presentation. Your presentation is just as important as the piece of artwork. You want it to look finished. So when you're um, adding color, do a nice job. Take your time. It's not a race. And really make this thing pop because this is a really fun project. And the leaves are different. So you really want to accentuate the color because again, we know leaves don't really look like this. Now the cool part when you're working with uh, colored pencils is you can go over top of the color and you can kind of create a brand new color. And I absolutely love that. I'm going to mix some brown in with this leaf because green and brown, that's how leaves are made. So it looks really nice. And again, just have fun. Take your time. Hopefully if you don't have um, colored 
pencils. Hopefully you've got some crayons you can use and finish it up. And again, you're gonna do the Roy G. Biv. Plan it out. Sometimes what I do is I'll take a pencil and I'll write lightly the color red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and then violet and violet in the art world is called purple. Now when you start here, you could say, all right, violet, so I'm gonna start over and go red, orange, or A-N-G-E, yellow, and green, and then after green is gonna come blue, but now here's where it gets tricky. When you go to color these in, make sure you erase the word because when I go in here to add red into this little guy's face, I don't want the word red to show up. So I'm gonna erase the word red and then I'm gonna go ahead and add the red into his face. And again, if you're using crayons or colored pencils or markers, color neatly. This is not the way we color that is not finished. I want it to pop off the page. You're gonna have to put a background color in there. You can't leave the paper white because it just would look unfinished. And again, if you're doing this, you wanna be really careful of the way you're adding marks to the paper because if you are coloring this and you're going this direction and then all of a sudden you go this direction and it just looks like scribble, this is not gonna look like a nice finished fourth grade piece of artwork. So I'm gonna go over this. And again, the way that I apply colored pencils is I scumble. Again, you can do the same technique with crayon and you can even go over it, but we don't want to go over this with other colors because we just want the pure red. So there's the beginning of the red. While I've got this red in my hand, I should come down here and find the other red. What do I need to do first before I start that? I need to erase this portion of it and I'm going to go in and I'm going to put this red in there. The reason you wanna finish the red is because what if you put this down and you accidentally pick up a different red? It's gonna look kind of silly if the reds don't match and the blues and all of those other colors. All right, you can see I've added color to it and I'm keeping it <clears throat> nice and smooth. And I ask you to do the same. Um, remember to figure out which areas are gonna have the background in it. This obviously underneath his little tummy is gonna have the background in it. Notice I added a couple more leaves over here because this space seemed empty when I was getting ready to um, outline things. So I added some leaves here and another branch coming in. So have fun with this. 